Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall. I'm a photographer in Southeast Michigan and on my YouTube channel, I cover a ton about flash photography. Most notably, I have covered for years now the entire lineup of Godox X-Series products just because I enjoy using them so much. Now, if the title of this video caught your attention because you're just starting to use the Godox X-Series, then I hope this video is the perfect place for you to start because I want it to be a guide for people who are newer to flash photography or new specifically to interfacing with these lights. Now, the reason that I'm kind of surrounded by options from the Godox X-Series is because I want to provide you some of the general language and descriptions for using this equipment. I want you to have a little idea of how diverse your options are here, what this equipment's capable of, and how it all works together, as well as the language for using these devices. And understanding all this language is important because I've got tons of videos on all of these products, as well as the dozens of other Godox products that are available that you can dive into deep, but having a general understanding of what I'm talking about will really help before you dig into those. So first off, let's really briefly talk about the diversity and the names of these different classes of lights. First up, in the center here, we have the center of this entire series of lighting, and that is this transmitter or trigger that is on top of my camera here. Now on my camera here is the Flashpoint R2 Pro Mark II, which is a proprietary trigger that works on the entire Godox X-Series, but it's only available from Adorama in the US under the Flashpoint brand. Now by far, since I've started making these videos, the most common question that I get is, does Flashpoint and Godox work together? Well, right here I have a Godox 8300 Pro, a Godox MS300, but a Flashpoint 600 Pro, and a Flashpoint Zoom R2, and a Flashpoint trigger. Yes, it all works together. And that's the first thing that I want you to know is that even though this equipment may have different names in different countries, even in the same country, it can have different names it all works together. As long as it's manufactured by Godox and part of the X series, then it's all going to work interchangeably. If you're interested to know more about why these have different names, then I've made a video about it that you can check out right up here. Now the transmitter or trigger that you see on camera is one type of master device that can control any of the other products in the series off camera. We can control its power, we can trigger high speed sync, we can control TTL, we can control stroboscopic mode. When it comes to speed lights, we can change the zoom head of the flash. We can access pretty much any of the necessary features on these flashes without ever having to walk up to them, which just saves you a ton of time as a photographer because you're not running up to these lights and changing settings on the back of them just to get through your shoot. There are, I think, four other transmitters that you can choose from. There's been different iterations over the years now. And in addition to the transmitters available, there's also speed lights, which can act as a master. These speed lights can control any of these lights off camera as well. So that's where this system really shines in that anything under the X series can be used to trigger anything else in the X series. If it's a Godox X series product and it has a hot shoe on the bottom of it, then it can be used to trigger any of the off camera specific lights. And in terms of selecting between the lights, there are so many different lights available. I believe there are now five full size speed lights and two mini speed lights that are available. There's a few portable battery operated strobes. So this is battery, it's an all in one unit. This is the 8300 Pro, but there's also the 8200, the 8200 Pro, the 8400 Pro. Then you start getting into larger size lights that are less portable, but still all in one that have the battery on the back, such as this 8600 Pro. There's one even bigger called the 8200 Pro. And lastly, there are AC powered strobes. So that would be the standard studio strobe. They plug into the wall. There is no battery attachment for them, no battery on board. And when it comes to picking AC strobes, there are like over 20 AC strobes that you can choose from of different sizes, powers, and capabilities. So there's really something for any type of use case in this series of lighting. Now, if you're coming from another type of flash equipment, chances are you're already familiar with the language behind it. You're already familiar with channels and groups, but if you're new to flash in general, I do wanna quickly go over those terms. So the way that these devices communicate is over 2.4 gigahertz of wireless connection. That's how all of these lights know to flash when this one calls a shot. Now the products do also have optical triggering. If you've never used that before, optical triggering is basically when this flash sees another flash, 
it will fire as well. But optical triggering has its flaws in that it requires line of sight, so it's not as stable as using a wireless connection. Next, I want to address channels and groups as that's the primary way that you can kind of separate your lights to know that your pack of lights is working together how you want. So the wireless channel is a number from one to 32, and it's a frequency for all of these flashes to communicate through. In addition to channels, we also have groups. Groups are a letter from A through E that designate a specific group of devices. And when using a transmitter or speed light as a master, I can send out a specific power signal to each group independently. So A receives one instruction, B receives another, and C receives a different one. If a wireless channel is a highway, then the groups are different lanes that allow these to operate at different speeds. And finally, we control that speed using power levels, which on this equipment is represented through fractions. So when we're telling a flash to fire at its maximum power, we would want it to be operating at one over one. If you do the math, that's 100%, 100% of its peak power. From there, these fractions drop in full stop increments with levels in between. Every time you drop a stop of light, you're dropping 50% power, and the fractions do exactly that. You start at one over one, then you go to a half, a quarter, eighth, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and that power level is the biggest thing that separates all these different lights. For instance, this is a 300 watt light. This is roughly a 50 watt light. This is a 300 watt light. This is a 600 watt light. The power of the light is probably the first thing that you wanna pick when deciding your flash. And if you're trying to figure out what power level of flash that you need, then I suggest watching this video in the top right corner. So let's revisit that. The transmitter sends out the power signal, which is basically the speed limit to different groups of devices, which are like different lanes on a highway or channel that they all know to be on. Does that actually make sense? Now, since this is the most introductory video I've made into these products, I want this to be an index into everything else that I've made. So in the description below, you will see all the operational guides that I've made on all these different lights. So you can go find your specific light. That way you know how to control every button on it, every review that I've made on these products so that you can see which light I like for what type of user. And if you're looking for more general lighting knowledge, how to actually use these things and put them to work, then I've got links to a playlist where I show you how I shoot behind the scenes, as well as my intro to lighting series. That way, you can learn how to take these from controlling one light in a studio to using multiple lights outdoors. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Godox X series. If you did, leave it a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos on flash photography and comment below if you have any questions. Until next time, keep on shooting.